morning, everybody. Y'all are looking pretty good tonight. I don't know if you tried to, but you are. So congratulations. All right, that's my joke of the evening. Only a few people thought it was funny. I, I won't quit my day job. No, I love y'all. Thank y'all for being here. I hope you're excited to be here. I hope you're excited about what the Lord is doing in this place. And I hope some of you have got victory tonight. Y'all go ahead and stand with us. Victory in Jesus. Sing it with us. Well, I heard an old, old story. I was saved your day. and give him some praise in his house tonight. Lord, we thank you for that cleansing flood. And Lord, that there is still power in your blood to wash away our sins, God, and to make us clean and whole. Oh, precious is the flood. Come on and worship him tonight.
on and thank him for his blood tonight. Lord, we thank you for your blood, Lord, and we thank you that you are still in control, even whenever it seems like no one is. Lord, whenever it seems like nothing but chaos surrounds us, Father, we thank you that you are still in control, and Lord, that you are still more than able to meet our need, whatever it may be. Father, we thank you that you walk through the fire with us and stand through every test and trial right by our side. Father, I pray tonight that as we continue to press into your presence, Lord, as we continue to sing your praise, God, as we continue to surrender ourselves to you, Lord, that you would just continue to show us more of you. And Lord, that you would do what only you can do. Thank you, Lord.
Come on, lift your hands and sing it to him. Oh, somebody give the Lord some praise in this house tonight. Come on. Come on. If he's been more than enough to you, it shouldn't be hard to praise him tonight. Come on. If he's been your everything, it shouldn't be hard to give him a praise. Lord of God, I don't care if you got to dig down deep and give him one. Give him one tonight. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, no matter what we go through, God's still God. He's still good. No matter how bad it's been, God's still good. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, God's good. And he's good all the time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is so good to see each one here tonight. Glory to God, we've got some people here we ain't seen. Got some new ones. Glory to God. Well, I'm telling you, if this, if this service is anything like the rest of them, you're in for a treat. Praise God. Hallelujah. While you're standing, I want you to go with me to the book of Esther. Book of Esther, chapter 9. Glory to God. Esther, chapter 9. Starting in verse 23 and reading through verse 25. Word of God says, So the Jews accepted the custom which they had begun as Mordecai had written to them because Haman, the enemy of all the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to annihilate them and to cast pur, or that is the lot, to consume them and destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letter that this wicked plot which Haman had devised against the Jews, should return on his own head, and that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows. I want to minister this tonight on this subject. Hell is not in control of your destiny. Hell is not in control of your destiny. Would you look at your neighbor and tell them that? Hell is not in control of your destiny. Praise God. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you tonight, we give you praise and glory and honor. Lord, as we stand here tonight, Lord, I need your anointing. I need you to hide me behind the cross, bury me in the blood tonight. Father, I know, Lord, as hell has risen its head, Lord, against this revival, time after time after time. Father, I know tonight, Lord, that we're going to win the victory, Lord, because it's already won. You've already defeated our enemy, God, tonight. And I pray, Lord, that there's any in this place uh, that the enemy has come against. Uh, Lord, any, dear Heavenly Father, that the enemy is pushing back on. Uh, Father, that they would stand up and say hell is not in control of my destiny but heaven he yeah, glory to God heaven and my God is in control of where I'm headed and what I'm going to do father I pray that you bless this service Lord I pray that you heal I pray you deliver I pray you baptize I pray you save father whatever you want to do in this place father I'm going to go ahead and praise you on credit I'm going to go ahead and praise you for what you're going to do ahead of time and thank Thank you, Lord, for it all. In Jesus' name, we do humbly pray. And everybody say amen. amen. Lord of God, you may be seated. Often, as Christians, we find ourselves 
in trying circumstances that test our Christianity and push our Christianity to the limits. Glory to God. I'm going to tell you over the time that I've been a pastor, I have been to those places where I felt like one of, anybody ever had one of them stretch arms strong growing up? Glory to God. You know that man that you could pull his arm this way and pull his arm that way and stretch him about 20 feet each way. Glory to God. I, I, I've felt like that before. If i got anybody in here that's ever felt like that, you've been felt like you've been pushed to the limit. you felt like you've been stretched. As far as you can go, you felt like your Christianity couldn't take no more. Lord God, you, if one more thing come, it was going to be the straw that broke the camel's back. And, amen. The devil was there and he was on you and you felt like he was stepping on your last nerve. Do I have anybody in here like that? Come on now. That knows what I'm talking about. Amen. There comes a time that we find ourselves in those situations. Glory to God. And I want to tell you tonight, oh, glory to God, we're going to look at how hell attempted to over overthrow God's people and why it's not in charge and how you can take back, Lord God, charge from it. Lord God, if your life is out of whack, there's three things I want to bring into you here and I'm going to get out of your way and let the Holy Spirit have his way in here. Sometimes, number one, sometimes it looks like hell is winning. Anybody ever been there before? Sometimes it looks like, oh, you've prayed, you've cried, you've pleaded with God, but it ought, but sometimes, Brother Mike, it just looks like hell is winning. There's been times in my life, Lord God, it didn't matter what I did, it didn't matter how I felt, it didn't matter how good it, it, I felt, it didn't matter how much Holy Spirit I had within me, it didn't matter how much tongues I, I spoke, that there's times in my life, my life even as a pastor, I felt like hell was winning. You know, we've had those times, glory to God, where we've lost our jobs, the bills pile up, the painful decisions that's got to be made, the loss of a spouse or the loss of a child. Amen. You have a husband that goes out to the bars drinking. You have a wife that spends all your money. Praise God. You hear the doctor come in and knock glory to God to you and say, I, I've got bad news. It's, it's cancer. Oh, glory to God. Or it's heart disease and you don't have very much long to live. Or, or, you, or you come in one day and your husband or your wife says, I just don't love you no more. And you're going through a divorce. Or, or you're sitting there and it seems like everybody's got up and left you and you're lonely and depressed. Your children gotten pregnant or committed a crime. You feel like even God has quit helping yet and that the devil has taken over and is trying to wipe you out sometimes we get to the place that we feel like David did in Psalm 73 and 2 David said but as for me my feet had almost stumbled my steps were nearly slipped I nearly fell I nearly backed up I nearly backslid when I looked at everything around me and I seen the prosperity of the wicked I nearly gave up but I've come to tell somebody tonight, Lord God, hell is not in control of your destiny. You see, in our text, Haman decided that he was going to wipe out the Jewish race. He got together with his family and friends and they cast lots. He was asking evil forces, spiritual forces to help him pick the right time to annihilate the Jews. How many of you know the devil can plot all he wants to, but God is still in control? Come on, I come to tell somebody, so, oh, glory to God, don't listen to the enemy, yeah, yeah, and in your ear. Don't listen to the devil up on your shoulder telling you you ain't going to make it. Somebody needs to turn over there to him and say, you are a liar. God is going to help me through this. Because you see, in this story, while they're trying to figure out what time that they're going to do this to the Jews, God is still in control of everything. God has a way of making the devil do what he wants to do. Because God, oh hallelujah, made him choose the last month of the year. Glory to God. The devil's stupid. When he thinks that he's going to outsmart God, now I didn't say he was stupid against us. We let him have some ways sometimes. 
But I want to tell you, the devil's stupid if he thinks he's going to outdo God. If he still thinks... As he said in Isaiah, I'm going to ascend up into heaven and I'm going to put my throne above his. I want to tell you, five times the devil says, I'm going to do this. One time the Lord said, no, you ain't. See, you've got to understand, God he still has his hand on the pulse of the enemy. So God, amen, made him choose the last month of the year. Meanwhile, God is in stock. God is working everywhere. Can you, in this story, if you ever get a chance to read it, Holy God, in its entirety, God is working in every avenue. You know, that's what I like about God. God's working behind the scenes even when we don't see him. Come on, somebody. Praise God. Uh, when you're sitting there throwing your hands up, thinking God ain't nowhere around, let me tell you what. Uh, Lord God, if you could pull back the screen uh, of reality, you would see angels, uh, Lord God, going by, uh, amen, and getting things set up uh, for God. Come on, God is working uh, in your life. Uh, oh, it may not seem like God's nowhere around, but let me tell you something, honey. He's there, praise God. It's a setup. Uh, God's getting ready to bless you in spite of the enemy, glory. Glory to God. So in the meantime, God installs a Jewish queen of great beauty on the throne. Esther, praise God, she exposes Haman. Amen. She exposes his plot to the king who let the Jewish people annihilate their enemy first. You see, Haman and his sons were hanged on the very gallows he built for Mordecai and the Jewish people. I'm telling you, what we got to do, God's just asking us to have faith in him that everything's going to be all right. God's just asking us to, to trust him and what the devil intended for evil, God's going to turn it around for good. You see, the point is, hell thought it could overthrow the destiny of the people of God, but God reversed it and used it to promote the people of God. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but hell's come against you. Lord God, hell thought it was in control of your destiny, but somebody shout at me. Lord God, say, God is. God is. Hallelujah. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, the devil's picked on the wrong one here. Devil's picked on the wrong one here. Glory to God. Because the apostle Paul said, for us not to be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because let me tell you, if you're ignorant of something, it doesn't mean you're stupid. There's a difference between being ignorant and stupid. Ignorant means you just don't have the, the knowledge. Stupid means you have the knowledge and won't use it. That's just redneck country talk there. <laughs> Praise God. But you see, Paul said we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. Look around you folks. The devil's tried every way in, under the sun to hinder this revival. But we are in our fourth week. Come on now. Praise God. I, I told Caleb the other day, I said, brother, I've never preached in a four-week revival, uh, much less a spontaneous revival like this. Never in my entire career as a pastor have I ever done this. But I'm going to tell you, God had a plan, and he still got a plan. Come on now. 23 baptized in the Holy Ghost. 11 saved. 9 restored. 7 baptized in water. And that's just the beginning of what God wants to do this year. Praise God. I'm telling you, somebody needs to look the devil it's square in the eye and say, you are a liar. I'm moving on with God. Hell is not in control of my destiny. God is. Woo. Sometimes it looks like hell's winning. But you just realize it's only a look. Number two, hell is not in control of your destiny. Listen, because you're God's property, not Satan's. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What are you talking about, Pastor? 
1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Ye are not your own. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your body and your spirit, which are God's. Look at your neighbor and tell him you don't belong to the devil. You belong to God. Let me tell you something. The devil has to trespass on God's property to mess with you. No, 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 no. You didn't hear me. Glory to God. He has to trespass. We live in rural Tennessee. Glory to God. Most of us, gun owners, I'd hate to take account of how many guns are in here right now. A few. And I guarantee you, <laughs> those same people, that are carrying feel the same way about their property. If I didn't invite you on there, you better not come. But you see, the devil keeps trying to invite himself into your life. The devil keeps trying to invite himself into your circumstance. The devil keeps trying to push himself in little by little, by little by little, glory to God. Amen. Paul said, neither give place to the devil. I think it's time for the church to stand on its feet and say, I don't belong to you. I'm God's property. You can't have my, my health. You can't have my family. You can't have my church. You cannot come. If you do, you are trespassing. You're God's property. You see, God is jealous over what is his. He guards and fights for what is his. Tell your neighbor, I'm God's property. You see, hell is not in control of your destiny because God has a plan for you. Ooh, what are you talking about? Somebody going to get this tonight, I tell you. Look at your neighbor and say, God's got a plan for you. Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future. But you see we got to look at the deeper meaning here. Glory to God, the Hebrew word for plans is translated imaginations. So what the Hebrew word, oh glory to God, the Hebrew word has to do with what God would like to do for you. His intention. So it could be translated, I know the imaginations I have toward you. And how many of you know that God has a vivid imagination? Because the word of God declares, oh, hallelujah, I've told it time and time again. He said, now who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think of him, praise God. I'm telling you, we can't fathom. Isaiah said, his thoughts are so much higher than our thoughts and his ways so much higher than our ways. I'm telling you, my God, whatever I think that God's going to do, God said, I want to do that much more, praise God. You see... We limit God because our imagination only goes so far and our thoughts only go so far. God said, if you just turn loose, I'd show you where I want to take you. If you just surrender, I'd show you what I want to do with you. Praise God. You are not a nobody. You are a somebody. You are a saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost-filled child of the living God. You're a, come on now, you're a king's kid. Royal blood flows through your veins. Hallelujah. You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. My God, a peculiar people. Praise God. Why don't we stand up and act like it? God's got plans for you. 
hell can't control your destiny because God has plans for you. You see, even if your life has been messed up, God's not finished with you yet. I get so tired. There's been times as pastor, glory to God, Brother Nathan, where are you, brother? Wave at me. Brother Nathan, he's pastored a long time too. Glory to God. So is Brother Larry. There's been times in my ministry, I get so tired of people telling me I've done too much. I've gone too far. God can't help me now. God can't do nothing with me. I'm an embarrassment. And all it is is the devil putting condemnation on you. Amen. Trying to push you down and keep you down. Did you hear me? I don't care how messed up, jacked up your life is. Glory to God. God wants to fix you. How do you know that, preacher? Because I read it in Jeremiah chapter 18 where Jeremiah goes down to the potter's house. Oh, and he begins to look in the potter's house. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. And what he sees is that clay in the hand of the potter. It gets marred, but the potter doesn't take that clay and throw it over in the corner and say, you no good piece of clay, you stay right there. But no, what he does, he puts more water on it, praise God, and he begins to mold it again. I'm telling you tonight, God wants to use you. No matter how messed up you are, let God change your life, praise God. He's got a plan for you. Woo. Hell's not in control of your destiny because you're a winner and not a loser. You're a winner, not a loser. If somebody goes like that to yours, smack that hand away. But you need to look at them and quote them. First John 4, 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You Listen to me. In Adam, we were born a loser. But in Christ, we were born a winner. Before time began, we were a part of God's plan. You were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. Praise God. You see, when you were born again, you were born into God's image, created in his likeness, and born of his spirit. You're a child of the most high God. You're a king's kid. Oh, hallelujah. My God. Look, come on. You're a winner. Somebody shout, I'm a winner. Hell is not in control of your destiny because the word is working in you. What are you saying? Isaiah 55 and 11, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me, boy, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. You hear me? God's word is an active force creating, sustaining, and propelling all things toward the will of God. You see, it doesn't matter how bad hell fights you, if God be for you, who can be against you? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No power in heaven or earth can derail God's plan. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Romans chapter 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquered through him who loved us. For I am convinced or persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons nor neither present nor the future nor the, any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm telling you folks, quit building your future around your past. Your past is not who you are anymore. God has a plan for you. You see, all the devil knows how to do is bring up who you used to be. That's all he knows how to do. Some, some of us, some folk in here, drug dealers, 
drug addicts, alcoholics, Lord of God, sinners of all types. Look around you, folks. That was every one of us. We all sin come short of the glory of God. Hey, not a one of us in here born righteous. I had I had pastors for parents. Didn't make me holy. Didn't make me righteous. Didn't make me saved. I had to find Jesus myself at the age of 13 down at the end of a pew in a Baptist church. Lord God, when that preacher got to preaching on the fourth man in the fire, do you want to meet him? I said, yes, I do. Praise God. I hate walking through the fire by myself and I need him. Praise God. But you see, all the enemy knows how to do is bring up what you used to do. You know what you need to do? Some of y'all in here, what you need to do? You need to look at the devil and say, I don't identify with that no more. That is good preaching, that ain't, that ain't the tag on me anymore. That, that's not who I am anymore. Come on. Yeah, I'm not. Come on now. I'm not denying that's who I used to be. But there come a day. There came a day. Hey Amen. When I got down on my knees and I found the Lord in salvation, there came a day. Praise God. I'm not denying that's who I was. But praise God. When he washed me in his blood, he washed those sins away. You see, some of y'all can't move forward because you're stuck in your past. See, everything you've been going through, the battles, the afflictions, the tests, the setbacks, the strange trials, the abnormal hindrances that you've experienced is the enemy trying to keep you from your destiny. I want you to hear me right here. Satan, Satan's greatest fear is your tomorrow. You see, Satan doesn't want you to become who God says you can become. And see, some, some folk in the American church have bought into that lie. I just can't be any better than what I am. I think the Lord's been showing some folk in here these last four weeks. You have grossly underestimated yourself. Praise God. Let me tell you, Satan don't want you to become who, you, who God wants you to become. He don't want you to reach that destiny. He don't want you to reach that place of your potential. Glory to God. Amen. He wants you to believe that you're a nobody and a nothing, praise God. And you don't have the education and you don't have the backing. You don't have the resources. Let me tell you, God is your father. You have every resource you ever need to get done what needs to be done. You see, the devil may hinder you, but he can't stop you. Lord of God, and last of all, somebody say amen. Lord of God. How can we take back control? How can we take back control? Four things right quickly. Number one, you got to understand, you got to do some spiritual warfare against the enemy. Don't give me that old line, well, pastor, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Hog wash. I got news for you. you. You didn't see, and it ain't fine print. It's the big print over in Timothy where Paul was talking to Timothy. He said, be a good soldier for the Lord. I've got news for you. When you got saved, you enlisted in the army of the Lord. Hey man, you got to do some spiritual warfare. Praise God, I'm telling you, when we begin to warfare against the enemy, we can bind and loose, Matthew 16, 19. Lord God, we can cast out the enemy in the name of Jesus, Mark 16. We can plead the blood of Christ, Revelation chapter 12. Amen. And we can ask God to loose his warring angel against the enemy, Matthew chapter 26. I'm telling you, the church needs to stand up and go to battle with the enemy. Praise God. There's too many of our churches that are dying. Oh, I'm going to get on it again. 
And I'm talking about church of God. Not, not just any church. I'm talking about some church of God that are deader than doornails. We don't have any power no more. We programmed the Holy Ghost out. Seems like we're ashamed of the Holy Ghost anymore. Don't you move. You're going to upset people that's come from other denominations. Hey, if you hear from another denomination, oh, glory to God, get, get in and help yourself. Come on. Hallelujah. He, this is not just a church of God thing. This is not just a Pentecostal thing. It's a for whosoever will thing. Come on now. He wants to feel anybody and everybody tonight. Glory to God. Come on. I'm telling you, we're in a battle and we need the Holy Spirit to get in us and be in us to fight a successful warfare. Praise God. You want to know why the, the devil's not fighting some churches? It's because they ain't doing nothing. That's my motto, brother. I stole your motto. You steal mine. Praise God. How are we going to take back control? Not only spiritual warfare, but you got to give God some praise. No, 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 no. Well, now. I get upset. I'm sorry. I do. I get upset. Praise God. When I hear folks say, well, pastor, that's just not me. That's, that's just not me. Really? I don't know about you, but I couldn't keep quiet when the Lord saved me. I don't know about you, but when I got sanctified, I couldn't keep quiet again. Lord God, when the Holy Ghost, when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, brother, I, I couldn't stay still. I, I couldn't be quiet. Come on now. When I feel the Holy Spirit, I'm going to shout. Why? Because listen to me. I'm not shouting because the devils are subject unto me. I'm not shouting because I'm healed. I'm not shouting, praise God, because I've been delivered. I'm shouting for the number one reason of all. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. If you can't get happy over that, your wood's wet. You need to come back and get you another dose of the fire. Let me just go ahead and interject something here. There's a big difference between worship and praise. I can sit quietly and worship. But you can't sit quietly and praise. There are seven words in the Hebrew. All of them in the book of Psalms. Seven words for praise. And every one of them have a different meaning. And every one of them have a different action. Glory to God. One of them means to sing in the spirit. One of them means to dance. One of them means to lift up holy hands. One of them means to shout to God with a voice of triumph. Whoa. I'm telling you, the praise is distinctive. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can tell when somebody's praise. Oh, glory. I've walked up on people, praise God, in their prayer time. Glory to God. They're not praying. They're praising. And that's all right. That's Come on now. God wants us to praise Him. I want to praise Him because there's a, there's a promise attached to praise that goes like this. That God dwells in the midst of the praises of His people. Praise God. Give God some praise. I don't. If you gotta wait till you feel it, you're gonna miss it. Come on now. Praise is good anytime. Come on now. 
whether you feel whether you feel the spirit or not whether you feel happy or not come on if you got to get emotions involved then your praise pre usually ain't genuine I'm telling you we praise God simply because he is worthy and there is nobody else you see the enemy is trying his best to take your praise away why because he was a praise team leader in heaven have you ever noticed that the first place the devil attacks in a church is in the praise He's trying to quiet the praise because he don't want anybody to praise. Because you see, the Word of God says that he, Satan, Lucifer, used to be the one that the praise would go through. It would flow through him to get to God. That's what the Word says in Isaiah. Glory to God. But he got jealous. He got lifted up in pride because he wanted all that praise for himself. Glory to God. But now that he can't have all that praise, he's going to try to stop your praise. I'm going to tell you, somebody needs to shout over the devil tonight. No matter what the devil's trying to do, no matter how he's coming against you, no matter how he's trying to take control, somebody needs to just stand up and shout over the enemy tonight. Praise God. If you want to take back control, you've got to give God the praise. Number two, you've got to stand on the word and claim the blessing. What are you talking about? I'm telling you, God's promised you better days. Psalms 35, weep a man dear for the night. But joy cometh in the morning. He's promised you deliverance, Psalms 34. He's, he, he's promised you bodily healing, Isaiah 53. He's promised you comfort in sorrow, Isaiah 43. He's promised you your physical needs will be met, Philippians 4, 19 and Matthew 6. He's uh, promised you an eternal home, John 14. He's promised you sufficient grace, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. I'm telling you, stand on the promises of God. We used to sing that old hymn. Lord God, when I was growing up in the Baptist church, standing on the promises of Christ my King. Oh, Lord God, I ain't got it wrote down, so I can't sing nothing for that. Think about it. Standing on the promises of God. Why? Because they're a firm foundation under your feet. Praise God. You see, we need to claim what is ours. When we do that by faith, we're going to receive what's promised. Standing, praying, believing, receiving, and expecting to receive it. I'm telling you folks, Hebrews 10, 35 and 36, so do not throw away your confidence. It will be, be richly rewarded. You need to preserve so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. Praise God. Stand on the promises of God. Stand with me. 